Robert yes. L. Dean, who do we have with us today? It's just amazing how God keeps letting every round go higher and higher and higher. Mm -hmm. This gentleman is an entrepreneur. He's an author. He's a producer. He's a drummer. None other than Big Mike Clemens. What's up, brother? Big Mike, how you doing, man? I'm wonderful. How are you? We are blessed and highly favored. I'm just going to just straight up, I'm just going to come into it right yes, away. Yes, we're and, excited. And ask the question, is that your your standard beard or is that the COVID beard? <laughs> standard, actually. <laughs> okay. So before, before COVID came in and everything else, you was rocking the beard? Yes. Okay, so everybody likes saying, look, this is my COVID beard. He said, no. I was rocking this before COVID, right. and I'm going to rock it after COVID. Yes. Yeah, man. So what's going on with you, bro? I am good. I can't complain, man. Just enjoying life and trying to be a better person every day. That's all. So, right. so are you in the studio? What's going on? Because I know that during this pandemic, some folks is in the lab doing some damage. No, I actually been... Um, Really just trying to um, grow the business and, um, you know, just moved into a new house and stuff like that. So just trying to get settled. Um, um, with the pandemic, it's been a little difficult with some things, but it's been great. You know, um, business has been good. God sustained us. Yes. Um, I can't complain. I can't complain. No, no, not in the studio right now. Just, um, again, just trying to figure out the next move for the business. And we've got a couple more things launching, so... Well, right. let's, let's jump right into this. How did you first get started into the music industry? Oh, man, I was about, Lord, <laughs> I probably was about 17, 18. And it's a guy by the name of Stanley Brown from New York. Um, he he was at the time, I, I known him from, he was the music director for Hezekiah Walker and mm -hmm. things like that. And he was a great organ player, keyboard player. And um, he called me and my brother down for an audition for the um, for Aaron Hall from the group Guy, mm -hmm. and um, and he just he, he took us he took us under his wings and and we had a whole band from Connecticut and we all we all went together and we all made it together and he made sure that we were good and just from there on he always guided us always helped us and you know and it started there really um, and from there on it just kept going. Further and further. <laughs> okay, so you you just shouted, you just said your brother. So who was the original crew that you rock with uh, when you started this journey? Um, me, my brother Nathan Clemens. Shout out to Newt and um, Tom Powell, um, Rodney Davis. All everybody's from Connecticut, mm -hmm. um, and we kind of was a, was one of the first one of the first ones of our generation to go out on the road professionally um and 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 play for artists you know like you know we did drew hill together wow um we did aaron hall you know my brother um funny because he wanted a taste of the road but it was like ah uh, he like he's a studio person right mm -hmm. and you know and ever since i was um in high school i would watch him in our house, um, create beats and music, you know, from going back to the real to real stuff. It's like way back then. Mm -hmm. And um, he, so he inspired me to even, he was the first and first person that inspired me to get into music. You know, I was a drummer, um, but he wanted more and he pushed me into that as well. Now, I'm gonna ask you this question and, and, and this is not, I'm, I'm not coming at you wrong. I just gotta ask the question. I really didn't think there was black people in Connecticut. Is there are there a lot of black people in Connecticut? <laughs> a lot. Oh. There is. Depending oh. on where you are. I'm from Stratford, um, you know, which is mixed. Um, you got um, Bridgeport, which is um, a lot of black, a lot of um, um, Hispanic as well. Um, you know, if you go to Greenwich and places like that, you may get, you know, some of the other color. Okay. <laughs> but... Uh, there's a lot of black people in Connecticut, though. It's really a lot. Okay, because, you know, I was wondering, I'm like saying, I know in New York it's cold, but Connecticut is just like darn right freezing. I, I was like saying, let my people go. I didn't think y'all right. was there. 
<laughs> now, we're there. They're, they're deep, too. <laughs> that, that's but Bridgeport was really, it's really um, considered a really, um, crime-wise, there's a lot of crime in, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. A lot of people really? from New York, wow. people like that know Bridgeport, Connecticut, and Bridgeport, New Haven. There was a, there's some really bad areas, wow. actually, in Connecticut. Really bad areas. So, so let me just ask this one question. When you grew up, did you grow up in the suburbs or did you grow up in the hood? In between. <laughs> okay. I, was, I was thinking he was going to say that. It, I didn't grow up in the hood, so I don't know what, you know, I don't, didn't grow up in the projects, nothing like that, but right. I wasn't far from it. But even Stratford, Stratford's projects were not projects. Like, you look at, you know, you think of projects, think of like the, the, Good time. the um, buildings, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, we didn't have it. It would still look like condos. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so it wasn't like good times that we saw because that was nah, good in the Chicago. Nothing like good times. It wasn't it wasn't oh, pretty no. pretty pr- 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 green. green. Right. <laughs> it was it wasn't that. Nah, nah. Right. So no, JJ JJ <laughs> Harrison is in Connecticut and Jace Pastor J C White has a church there, correct? Yep. Exactly. So where so where where J C White Church is is um kind of in the middle, it used to be on the west, the west side of Bridgeport, mm-hmm. which was which can be you know um, crime you know related. Um, but um, but people see when you're, I feel like they're good people, and um, and I've, there's ne- nothing never happened. You know he, he would um, J C Wright was known and people respected him mm-hmm. and people just I mean. I feel like God was all over him then. So it's like nobody, you know, we can walk outside even though we're in the hood and it's like we're all comfortable out there. Right. So I'm going to ask you a question. Like if you come to San Diego or you come to the West Coast, it's all about the Mexican food and the tacos and and all Mm -hmm. the other stuff. If I was coming to uh, Connecticut, what would be the signature thing I should look for when I come there? Besides snow. Shoot. (laughs) Right. Um, (laughs) So food, um, Jamaican food. Okay. Yes. Um, like, like like West Indian. That's that's big there. There's a lot. There's a good some good um, because there's a lot of um West Indian people there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I would say Mexican, not not Mexican, um, Hispanic. Okay. Hispanic food like um, that 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 like would paella. be. Um, that would be pretty big. Yeah. Okay. But then so food. It's it's, it's, it's not really a. Like we're not known for like, like you said, like you saying going to San Diego or, or or even California. Period. You know, it's like you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have Mexican food. Mm-hmm. That out where we are is not like you, you got certain areas, but that's not like the big, you know, food. It's just long. Everybody just eat. But soul food, I would say, is one of the big things there too. Yeah, because you know, I'm thinking that everybody like you got the New York. You think of Chinese food and the hoagies. Uh, and a pizza, you know, you go to uh, Philadelphia, you got to go get you a cheese steak. But in Connecticut, right, right, it's just right. like, find what you can find, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, I've never, you know, like I said, it, it, yeah, it's not no one thing like we're going to go there for and this is what it is. Nah, it's not, it's not, it's not like going to Philly or New York. Nah, everybody breakfast pizza after New York, but you know, but we have good pizza though. We're, we're, mm-hmm. we're, I guess because we're close to New York, so we do have a lot of good pizza places. I think it's a lot of um, like 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 my wife, she she from Virginia, but when we went to Connecticut and I took her to a pizza place, she loved it. So it's like up north, this has a a um, this good food. I would say this good food. Period. Okay. All right. Well, I know that your wife is anointed because she's from Virginia, and I was born in Virginia, so we we on good terms already. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I have a, yes, I have yes. A, I have a question. You, you were a drummer, uh-huh. uh, traveled all over the country as a drummer. What transitioned you into the production side of it? Because you started producing. Um, I think my brother, number one, was a big influence with that and I think it was I wanted I always wanted more I'm never settled mm-hmm. with just what I'm doing it's like I can do what I'm doing but it's like, okay and I, I, I can't say I get bored but it's like okay I want more what else can I do and that and I looked at people that I hung around with the other producers and people like that and I saw the money they were making too and I was like well I need some of this right <laughs> That's and, true. And, and, but it was real um it was inspiring for me to keep going up and up and up and up. And when I saw that, okay, we have, I have other talents and, mm-hmm. 
you know, my ear has grown and things like that. I said, okay, you know, and I I was always the one who were going to the studio. My, my brother would do most of the beats. I would help out, you know, as well, but he did 90% of a lot of stuff. Um, and I would be the one to go in the studio with the artists for the vocal side. Mm-hmm. And I would, you know, produce the vocals. And that's how we worked. So it was, uh, and I found um, a lot of, um, it was a lot of interest in that, you know, that was exciting for me. So that's what I did. So let me ask you this question. Let's go, uh, let's go to the mm-hmm. studio. What was the mm-hmm. best artist that you work with that made your job super easy? And what was the toughest artist that you work with that you, although they were talented, they were a challenge. Oh for God. You? <laughs> oh, wow. Mm-mm. Best artist, I would say, either Rough Ends or a group called Ask Me. They they were on Universal. They didn't come out, but they were. But the the writer, the girl that was in the group, wrote a lot of stuff with us. Mm-hmm. So it, that was it was always like this fun. So I, I would say um. For people who would know Rough Ends, yes, you know, we did a few of their albums and um, that was fun. Um, the toughest, I didn't really have a tough, everybody was cool. Um, I think everybody was cool. I, I, I didn't really, I didn't have a tough, I, I didn't have a person that was like, like that was like hard to, to, to produce, or I didn't have that. Even Mary J. Blige was easy, everybody was easy, mm-hmm. okay. yeah, I, I, yeah. I can't say I had a, a a rough one. See that he said he he's, he, he say that's safe. Go on, brother. That's all right. He said no, no rough one. <laughs> right, because because they because they know him. Well, watch he has, it, watch they know it. His Someone might increase my prayer life, but you know no rough ones. Right, right. <laughs> right. Who me? Right, right. <laughs> but what what I what I like yeah. about you is that you never stop serving in your church and in the gospel side as well. I think that says a lot mm-hmm. and. Tell us about your experience being a church boy and going into the secular side as well. Oh man, now that I can talk about. Um, it was it was hard, you know. Um, come from the church I was in, you know, it was a um, church that was you know very churchy, old school, you know, back then. Anyway, like mm-hmm. like all churches was. But um, when I first um, went on the road, you know, they talked about us. They it was it was it was hard for us um, because. We were going to hell, uh-uh. um, you know. We were playing secular music back then. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like we we brought in before the drum machines and things like that began. We really came to gospel. We were doing that stuff back then. Wow. So it was like you know, it sounds too R and B or it sounds too secular. You know, it's things like we've always had that battle with with the church people with that. Unless you were young, our our age. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I first went on the road, it was just like, wow, like really talking about, I mean, you know, I had, you know, I had AIDS, I had all this, there's so much stuff that, that people, they were saying about us. And it was just like, wow. But then you accept my ties. Ooh. <laughs> right. right. You know, it was, it was real. Um, it was difficult at first. Now, when, let me ask you this question. It was difficult. Let's talk about your parents or uh, who was raising you. How did they handle you know, this, that energy that they, that the church was given mm-hmm. to them at that time. Um, my mom supported us. My mom always, she, and she told, she told us years later, um, she always knew we would come back to the church. Um, but she, and God let her know that. So she was okay. You know, she always kept us in prayer. She never went to an R&B concert, mm-hmm. but um, she supported us and that's why i like about my mom she never judged us she never said you know no you're going to hell it she's never done that and that's what i think that's what really kept us um going right. because if she would have done that I, I don't know how that would have affected us right mm-hmm. but she really supported us that stuff i think people just didn't understand because when we were growing up and i'm 51 and back in those days the saints were anything that was going to separate them from from God. They didn't they didn't want no parts of it, so they would call it secular right. or the devil's this when they didn't really understand because a lot of things weren't sins mm-hmm. that they made us feel like was. 
Yeah. 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 And, and now and, it's like anything goes. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 we're going too of, far. Yeah. One of the things I was saying that, you know, I was very blessed to be in a very progressive, uh, Kojic church. And so our, our bishop would allow us to ask questions and everything else of that nature. And I was one of those really, you know, as a musician, I always ask questions like, well, you say that we can't play secular music because it's, it's the devil, but, you know, we got all these military people here that shoot folks, and, 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 and uh, they do this, and we got this, and we got, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. and, and then that's when we began to have real dialogue. I think that um, we have to realize that um, the church is not the building, but it's us, yes. and that if we're taking yeah. God along with us everywhere we go, when we walk into a place, we shift the atmosphere, be it if we're in the military, on the police force, or even playing for a secular group. Um, I know a lot of my friends that play for secular groups that they became the chaplain for the group. They yep. became the spiritual advisor for the group. They were the ones that when everybody else was going out partying, they was in their room and people were coming to them saying, you know, will you pray for me? Can yes. you help me through? I'm going through. So they became the, the on-house counselor um, for the secular <laughs> groups. And wow. so uh, there's a ministry um, because everybody's not going to come to the church. So we need people in politics. We need people in the boardroom yes. to affect change. <laughs> I agree. And I think um, back then they didn't, like you said, they didn't understand a lot. They, 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 they just, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. It was just Jesus, 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 which is great. Right. But, um, uh, it, it, you know, I feel like some people are sent, you know, to the marketplace and sent lead on these places yes. for those reasons. You know, you can stand out if you're a child of God and people, people always saw something different than me. Saw people something different than you guys. And, mm -hmm. People that were from church and you know some some even the, the last few years of me on the road, there were certain things that people would do in front of me or wouldn't do in front of me. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Because of the respect or because of they how they you know how they felt about you know where my walk was or whatever. Right. And right. you know so so as I think about it, it's like I knew God had His hands on me and was over me and covering me even even through all of my journey. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And you don't realize that stuff until, you know, years later when you get mature and you and you go through life and you go through things. It's like, wow, God, like you really was with me through all this. And, you know, and my mom always said, like she, she always reminded me, you know, that God said you will come back, you mm -hmm. know, so let you do what you do. But you will come back and you will come back safe. And that's how it happened. <laughs> right. Right. Let's talk about diversification. You know, a lot of times mm -hmm. we have people that are in the music business and pretty much they only focus on playing or gigging. Let's talk about how you have diversified diversified your brand out. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, like I said, I always wanted more. I always had a way of, if you put me in a desert, I'm going to get out. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, and, and I've always had that mentality. And I never wanted to be a drummer or musician that, that, you know, and not to throw shade against anyone, but there's musicians that I look up to or people that are just, you know, playing in church and they 80 years old and still doing the same thing. I never want to be that person. Right. I want to be the person that, um, you know, if I play for a church, you don't have to pay me. You know, I don't need that money from the church, you know, to 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 pay my bills and right. this and that. So so I, I've always tried to, you know, I've always heard of the multiple streams of income, mm -hmm. but had to start experience it and started right. to live it and started to, you know, and when I saw, okay, God, we you know he started putting all this stuff in me to do. And it was like, wow. And this is what, you know, so it, it came to a point where it's like, how much are you paying? Oh no, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, right. because right. If, if I can, you know, and, and not, not that I was above it, but because I, I've gotten to a level of, I don't need music to pay my bills. So yes. if I'm going to go out and sacrifice, be missing a weekend or missing, a, you know, a days at of, of what my legacy is, mm -hmm. then I have to, it has to be worth it. It has to, you know, make sense for me to go out now. Right. And that's what, that's how I lived it for the last couple of years. It had to make sense. Or, or if I do it, it's because I, you know, I want to go, oh, we're going to Philly. Oh, I, I, you know, I do, you know, it's, it's a, it's a choice now. It's not right. something that is, that I had to do. Mm -hmm. When I was on the road with Usher, it was like, you know, he'd do his tour and, you know, he'd make his millions and, we don't make the millions. So he's like, oh, you know, we're, I'm good now. And it's like, but we're not. So right. when I started seeing that stuff and, see, and seeing 
um, how how it affected me. The musicians affected me. I'm like paranoid. Like, what I'm gonna do now? Right. I, I had I couldn't do that no more. <laughs> I couldn't do that no more. And I had to create things that um, that can make me money while I'm asleep. Right. And that's what I you know that's what I'm doing. And that's what I strive to do every single day. Let, let's talk about you and your entrepreneurship. Let's talk about your juice bar. I believe it is. Yes. Let Let's talk about that because I think it's um, important. It's called not the ordinary juice. Say it again. Say it again. Say, say it again. The, the, the oh, name to me. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I, it's called not your ordinary juice bar. Um, I used to, I, I used to be a part of a franchise out here. Um, called um Juice Bar eighty twenty. Mm-hmm. But then um, as, as we grew and, and things like that, you know, God took me out of that situation. And, and, and my lovely wife now mm-hmm. um, has, um, you know, God gave her the name, Not Your Ordinary Juice Bar. So when, when, she, when she came to me with that name that kind of just rung in my spirit, um, we began to build on it. We began to change the stories that we had, change the names and things like that. And, um, and you know, our, our biggest thing is to help people. Our biggest thing is to make people feel better uh, we have a love for people mm-hmm. and um and, and and our juices has changed lives and that we can't even explain we pray over our juices and um it i mean it's it's just something that is it's took off on its own and 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 we're grateful for it um we do um when the store was open we you know we did you know of course wrap salads and stuff like that smoothies mm-hmm. now we just do detoxes and juices right now until we um until we decide to really where we're going to go with the store wise, mm-hmm. because, um, you know, with the pandemic and things like that, it's been really difficult. Um, but I'm just trying to see where, where God is leading us with that. But um, we're online and, um, that, that's, you know, that goes on itself. So it's been good. I'm going to ask this question. So, so, so does she, your wife got some street cred cause she came up with nacho. Uh, tell her, tell her, we're going to give her some street cred. <laughs> But just the name itself, Nacho Ordinary <laughs> Juice Bar. Uh, I'm like, what? Ordinary Juice Bar. Yeah. So, you, so now you, you're from VA. What part of VA are you from? Uh, Portsmouth. But I've been I've been on the West okay. Coast most of my life. But you know, uh, military military brought us there. You, you born when you now was playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about you and your health because part of your ministry with the Juice Bar is to help people health-wise, correct? Yes. Let, let's talk about your journey. Um, you know, I've, I've gone through a scare. I've gone through, you know, I used to weigh over, almost 400 pounds. And, wow. um, you know, I lost the weight naturally. Um, went cold turkey, uh, you know, and everybody doesn't do this. Um, but I, I, for me, this is something I had to do. And I trained my mind at the time that, you know, if I eat this, um, I don't say it now, but I, I used to I used to say back then if I eat this I'm gonna die. Like that right. was my mm-hmm. that was my tr- my mindset because right. I didn't want to fail. Right now mm-hmm. I don't say that. Right. But um, but it was it was it was it was a year of cold turkey and I just did it and I wanted to beat diabetes, high blood pressure, all these things that was going on with me. Um, I had an overactive thyroid, just so much that was going on. Wow. And I wanted to do that, so I, I trained. I, I, and I didn't have the juice bar then. I got the juice bar maybe a few years later mm-hmm. after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the juices have helped me um, create something um, bigger than me, something that um, with detoxes and, and, and how it helps the people, how it detoxes the body and things like that. It just kind of, I was in the store one day and, 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 and it hit me. And I, and I, and I really heard, I heard the Holy Spirit say right then and there, he said, this is why I was in the store right in the middle of it. And, I, and, I, and, and then he said, this is why I had you go through that stuff for this. And I was just like, wow. Because all the customers that come to us, high blood pressure, mm-hmm. heavy, all these, all, everything that I've had, right. <laughs> that's what, that's what all the customer, our, our customer base. So I think God wanted me to feel it, wanted me to go through it so I can understand um, you know, as I'm talking to other people with the same issues, what, what they felt, how they, you know, and how to deal with it. Right. So, so what was your first day starting your journey? Because people just want to know how to get started. Because once they get started, they can go, but it's the initial thing. You being right. almost 400 pounds, 
what was the first thing you did mm -hmm. to move into your new journey? Um, the first thing I did was make up my mind that I don't want to die. I don't want to, if I keep going at this rate, I'm going to get bigger and bigger and my health is going to get worse. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I feel like people should do is to do a, a self, a, a, like talk to themselves and, and, and make up their mind that they really want this. Mm -hmm. And because it's not easy, it's not something that is just, you know, oh, you want it and that's, that's it. No, there's work to do, but making the first step mm -hmm. of, 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 of admitting that you have an issue, admitting that, you know, that, that you can't live your life like the, like this for the rest of your life, especially with health issues and taking meds and, and insulin and whatever, whatever, you know, things that people go through is, and I know it's more of a mindset at times too, because it's like, you know, we don't want to put our bodies through this. We don't, we're, we're doing a, our bodies are, are a disservice, mm -hmm. but we can't control it. Right. You know, so it's like, how do we, you know, how do we, how do we get out of this? And I think it's just really, you know, asking God, like, like really like guide me through this because yeah. I can't do it alone, you know, and talking to yourself every day, because every day is not going to be easy. But if you want it bad enough, um, you know, having someone as a, as a, um, a partner mm -hmm. that, that that can help you, that can walk the journey with you, always helps mm -hmm. as well. Okay, that that's that's good stuff, and um, I'm I'm looking forward to getting my detox stuff, because um, I heard about your detox yeah through Dave Hollister. I was going on Dave Hollister's page, and yeah. I started reading stuff, and he is also one of your clients, and I was like, I'm gonna reach out to Big Mike, and I reached out to you, and now we're here. So what you're doing is a blessing. Yeah, I, I look forward to mine. Ah, man. And, and and that's and that's the thing it's for me it's is the business part is is what it is but um the 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 the, the conversations like this and, and and where and where and where it takes me and where because I, like i said we love people and i love to help people i want people i want everybody to feel good yes you know for some reason i want everybody to feel i want everybody to be healthy i want everybody to 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 not live you know with 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 you know in a hospital or or can't hardly walk or you know things like can't can't play with your kids outside and things like that those are things that me and Dave have talked about right. and they I've known Dave for for a while now and um and watched his journey and I told him I said bro like I got you let me help you and that's what that and that's what we're doing you know and I told him you know every, every day is not easy but if we push every single day it gets easier and easier because your mind starts to change and your mind became he never he said he never drank this much water in his life but he's still losing weight with drinking water right just little simple things like that it's that chicken for me man i keep seeing popeye's chicken all the time <laughs> and i'm only like 15 pounds 20 pounds overweight yeah you, oh you can do that easy that, that detox will help you alone with that and it's just and it's, and it's keeping because when you detox you reset your body yeah and then you um so it changes your taste buds yeah. things will taste um, more salty or sugary mm -hmm. um after because you haven't had it right so that's it will do that so it helps with those things and you begin to taste you know it's like well man this is i had i was drinking this right like, i can't drink sweet tea to this day like too really sweet. mcdonald's sweet tea you know uh, wow can't do it now let's I talk about headache. now let's talk about you as an Arthur. We're gonna end with you as an Arthur. Let's talk about your book. Mm -hmm. um, my book at the time was where I was in life. Um, it was um, it was a um, it was a journey for me. Um, you know, with with what I had going on back then, um, mm -hmm. and what I've gone through growing up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's been really good to me. Um, uh, it, it's 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 helped people. Um, it hit number one, I think, on Amazon. Wow, something like that. It's a while ago, but um, I really um, I'm, we are working on another book as well. Um, that 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 where we are now in life right. and where I am in and 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 want to um help other people um you know even on this journey right more more of a fitness more of a weight loss more you know that that kind of book that's I'm, I'm working on now so. Okay, well, include us. Then me and my sure. wife have a book, that we're, you know, working on as well. And it's just for, you know, couples too. So, so oh, a few great. things going on. Right. You, you, you're doing it, brother. Keep keep up the good work because your, your life was put here for a reason. And, and God is showing you that it's, it's to bless other people. And by you blessing other people, it in return blesses you as well. 
So tell us yes, um, where everybody can either get your product, go to your website, connect with you. Uh, how can they can they do all of the above? I'm on. Um, well, the the juice bar is N Y O J B, not your ordinary juice bar. Just the first letters of each um word. N Y O J B dot com. I also have a sale going on right now. Um, so catch the catch the sale. It's for the for the jump start um detox. That's that's online um, that you see everybody. That's the same one Dave did. The same one that you're you're doing as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a sale that's going on. That um definitely want you guys to catch that um. Where I'm on Instagram, Facebook, same and NYOJB. My personal is Big Mike Clemens. Um, that's on Instagram um, and Facebook as well. I'm revamping my website, so that's not up right now. Right. But it will be BigMikeClemens.com. Right. So, so my question is, um, when you were going up the ladder of your weight and they called you Big Mike, now that now that mm -hmm. you little, would you now be called Little Big Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Medium Mike, right, medium. Um, <laughs> big Mike. I still, I, I still play big drums. Okay, right. okay, okay. There you go. Right. You got a big heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got big. I'm still big. <laughs> right, right, right. Man, we, 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 we thank you so much, man. I appreciate your humbleness and how you responded to me. You didn't act all grand and brand new. You, you're very approachable, and I, that says a lot about Not your bad. character. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you, God. I appreciate you even, um, you know, wanting to interview me. I, I don't take any interview lightly. Um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for people. Grateful for, for to God that to put me on this platform to be able to inspire others and talk to others and tell people my story. I'm not ashamed of my story. I'm not ashamed of what I've been through. I want people to know what I've been through, and if I can help anyone, um, that's that's what that's what I'm here for. So. Amen. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, big, big me Mike me Clemens, big, big medium uh, uh, Mike <laughs> Clemens, uh, uh, the man with a plan who yeah. has a story yeah. and has a way of sending blessings your way for uh, individuals and couples. Tap into his juice bar. Tap yeah. into his books tap into his music because yes. you know that he's on everybody's project he's on everybody's project yes 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 so who are we gonna play today just to show him what what big mike got this is um a song from israel one of israel's grammy award winning songs uh-huh and this is i'm not uh i'm i am not forgotten by israel and new breed featuring big mike big mike on the drums <laughs> right here on gldradio1.com god bless you